Welcome to Patch and Play, where broken stuff finds new life. I'm GP and I like to mess around with stuff I don't know anything about. Here we dive headfirst into the heart of mechanics, electronics and everything in between. From bikes that have seen better days to laptops that refuse to wake up, cars that whimper instead of roar and gadgets that have lost their spark. We explore, we tinker, we fix. Well, hopefully. Yo Gaste, hi friends. Welcome back to part 2 of our Volvo revival. In part 1 we diagnosed a 12 year old Volvo with bad injectors and failing emissions. We removed the injectors and came to the conclusion that it needs pricey new ones. In this episode we will install said new injectors, code them into the ECU so the computer doesn't say no and we'll do the adaption test drive. I'm really curious if the car will like the new injectors. Let's get wrenching! And these three shiny new injectors arrived, cost uh, 600 euros, they were uh, actually discounted so I got lucky. Uh, normally they're around 240 or 230 but I got them from Autodoc for 200. So these will go back in together with number 3 here. Also my laptop decided to start acting up, as you can see it sometimes does that. And of course it has to do it on the day that I absolutely, absolutely need it to coat the injectors later on. So I wanted to take a subscription on V- first um, because I read online that it takes a while before it gets activated or something. But I guess it has to wait uh, until, uh, until this thing decides to work again. Okay, the laptop decided to come true and I just paid my uh, subscription um, and later on we should be able to uh, code the injectors uh, to the ECU. It's gonna be hard to see, I can imagine. The torque uh, for the bolts is uh, 4 newton meters and then 65 degrees. The torque uh, for these guys is stage 1 20 newton meters, stage 2 25 newton meters. But honestly, I don't know how I can do this with my torque wrench. So, this is uh, injector 2, the one that was leaking, and uh, this is quite dirty, so uh, better clean this up as best as I can. It's actually not a very difficult job, but you just gotta pay attention to what you are doing and then everything will be fine. Screw down. That's four. Need to invest in a better wrench. So this is about sixty degrees. Okay, so I put back the connectors in uh, the return line. You have to make sure that these snap back down so it kind of locks um, the return line to the injector. Uh, all the fuel lines are tightened to, yeah, I don't know, 20 newton meters, so I just made it tight. Um, and now it's time to place back the induction pipe here and then we can go for a first test. All right, everything back together. Well, the most important parts at least. Uh, so now we can try and start the engine. It's gonna run like crap because the injectors are not coded yet to the ECU. So it's not gonna be, it's gonna be a rough idle, I guess. And then we need to code the injectors to the ECU with the software V dash. Uh, 
I'm not gonna lie, this is where I started to panic a bit. But I quickly realized, since I was sure I connected everything in the right way, and I didn't really touch anything else, that I had to look in the direction of the fuel system. There was no mention in the instructions to bleed the fuel system, but at this point I decided to bleed the fuel system as you should do after replacing the fuel filter. Also the error code about fuel pressure being low gave it away. Who says modern cars are difficult to work on? I'm going to try and bleed the system, uh, but I don't have the correct tool, so you should put like an adapter on this and then and then create uh, a lower pressure, like minus 0.5 bar. So, well, I'm just gonna crank the engine over and see what happens here. Of course, this didn't do anything. But then I comprehended that creating a lower pressure are just fancy words to say suck the fuel pipe. I did bleed the system with my mouth. So I just connected this little hose and then I I sucked on, on, on the hose um, just a few times. Not until there was diesel coming out or anything, just until, I don't know, I, I heard some air escaping from the system. Uh, so I'm gonna reconnect the hose and then try again. Okay guys, I have to say I was getting a bit stressed out because it wouldn't it wouldn't start. It was cranking over but like nothing was happening. So because it was throwing a fuel uh, fuel pressure uh, fault and also I didn't hear any uh, any ignition. I was pretty sure it was a fuel issue but I didn't touch touch the fuel system but I did disconnect the return line. Um, so I guess some air got trapped uh, in some, some, some air bubble, I guess. Uh, so I'm really glad that it, it fired up. Uh, as you could hear, it is still running rough. This is because we didn't coat the injectors yet. I was just looking into the software. It seems I have to pay another 80 euro to uh, coat the injectors. So, well, I guess we have no choice. It's still cheaper than going to the dealer, but uh, it's a bit strange this software um, but yeah if it does the job it does the job right um, I tried to code the injectors with virtual machine but they don't allow it in a virtual machine so I have to come back tomorrow with an actual uh, Windows laptop and then uh, use V dash to, um, to code the injectors so let's see how it runs without proper coding Feels very rough, like a tractor. Okay, sorry for the dirty screen, uh, but I managed to connect V dash uh, in Windows 11, and uh, there we are. And I, I can even tune the car, but we're not gonna do that. It's already failing emissions, so we'll keep it stuck. And here when we click on uh, the vehicle detect tab we can see all the modules and this is the the old code um, for the fuel pressure that we solved yesterday um, well we'll have to see if this persists maybe there is a uh, still air in the system i don't know but here you have a button uh, change injector codes and here you can input the new codes and then add to cards i already uh, purchased some credits, so I'm just gonna put in the injector codes and hit confirm Now it's saying everything needs to be plugged in. So that's what I did The laptop is plugged in and there is a battery charger connected just in case and then I'm gonna hit confirm and Well, I think it's now coding Well, it disappeared and I just hit refresh and it's now showing the new codes, so I guess this is it. We'll start the vehicle, I guess. Okay, so yeah, the time was reset. So. There we 
go. Yeah, it does start a bit smoother. Doesn't sound really different to me. Maybe it's a tad more responsive. It does seem to idle a bit more relaxed, yeah. I feel less vibrations, a bit. So now we're heading back down to uh, Vida and here we have to clear the learned injector values. Um, so here it is if you go to uh, Diagnostics Vehicle Communication on the ECM at Advanced you have checking and resetting the adaption of injectors. So this is going to be resetting the, in, um, resetting the adaptions and then to be able to sh follow the adaption more clearly during the test drive. So I did chain, uh, check the counters, they were all zero, probably because of the coding of the injectors. And then it says it's going to do an additional reset. Uh, now I have to wait for three minutes. Um, and then I guess the next stage will be the test drive. So the Vita software is gonna show me a counter while driving um, and it should go up as it learns. Uh, I should drive in fourth, fifth or sixth gear, rev the engine up to 2800 RPM and then just release it and uh, yeah, let it, let it basically go. Um, so I'm gonna try and find a road where I can safely do that. Okay, this is the screen you can, that tells you how you're doing. I can film and drive and watch this at the same time, so I'll give you an update after. Okay, so I completed the adaption process, so you can see it while you drive. Uh, conditions is if you drive fast enough, I could only go in fourth gear because of speed limits. Um, so the best thing is you drive between, you go to 90 kilometers an hour and then you let it slow down to 60 and then this becomes green until it drops under, under about 60 kilometers an hour, it becomes red again, then you accelerate again and you do this a couple of times until this is at 100%. Now, this is still at zero, um, so I don't know what the deal is here. Now, the, the injectors are, well, three of them are new and for the, the fourth one I got new coats, so I guess they are uh, spot on. And I'm gonna read a little bit more in Vida what now. All right, I did some more driving around. I went to the store and I have to say, it seems it drives pretty much great. Um, a bit better than before. I'm not gonna say it's a huge difference, uh, although the fuel consumption now has dropped to five liters. Sorry, Summer GP. This is Winter GP and I'm going to interrupt you here. Because at the time I didn't feel much difference, but after quite a bit of driving around, I have to say the car feels like new. Fuel consumption dropped between half a liter to a liter, depending on the circumstances. There is much more torque in the low revs and the engine doesn't have the tendency to stall when driving slowly in second gear. Like when you, when you drop below 1000 RPM or something like... It's just, in general, it feels smoother. It feels smoother, but uh, I guess it's a bit too soon to jump to conclusions already, but uh, at least I'm, I'm really happy that everything worked out. Yeah, well, it didn't work out. Because after I went to Volvo and have the emissions tested, it failed again. I later learned that only a cracked or defective particulate filter can cause high soot emissions. Of course, the leaky injector was maybe a cause to a premature death of the filter. But on the other hand, with more than 10 years and 120,000 km, the DPF probably already gave the best of itself. So stay tuned if you want to know what other secrets this Volvo hides, and if it will ever pass technical inspection.